Uh, how you guys doing? This is again Manuel from Old School Metal Vinyl and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, let me take a few seconds to thank all the people who wrote me in the last couple of weeks uh, and showed the precision for the videos that were posted so far. I'm really, really glad you like what I'm doing. Um, as I said in the very first episode, uh, this is a small, unprofessional channel. It will probably never reach wider audiences, but that's not a point here. Uh, my main goal is to provide you vinyl fans with info that you can use whenever you're in trouble with the identification of a certain album. And as long as you find all this useful, to some extent, uh, my mission is considered accomplished. So once again, guys, thank you go for all the positive feedback. It's really appreciated. Keep the comments coming. And of course, if you have ideas for the future chapters, uh, feel absolutely free to share them. If there's any old school metal record that you'd like to see covered on this channel, uh, feel uh, totally free to let me know and I'll definitely consider all suggestions. So, in this uh, fourth installment, uh, we're gonna take a look at what I personally consider to be the ultimate masterpiece of Greek black metal. It's an album that really set the standards for this particular subgenre. When it came out, it was such a huge improvement over all the previous releases uh, this band had come up with until then. And in my opinion, it aged extremely well. St songs still sound very fresh 25 years later. Definitely a highly influential milestone that pretty much defined the Greek black metal sound as we know it today. And of course, I'm talking about the legendary Die Mighty Contract LP by Rodin Christ. As usual, uh, many different uh, pressings of this historical album exist. Let's shed some light on a few of them, uh, starting with the very first original edition uh, released in uh, 1993 on uh, Osmos production from France. Limitation uh, officially unknown. Uh, my guess is uh, this was pressed in a thousand copies. That's at least how limited most of the early Osmos Productions uh, vinyl releases were. I remember, for instance, the very first Samael LP uh, was definitely pressed in a thousand units. Uh, my guess is that the albums that followed were also pressed in the same amount. Bear in mind, uh, in the early to mid 90s, um, the interest for vinyl was uh, fading somehow. CD was the main format at the time, and of course, we're talking about an underground label here releasing underground bands. Uh, well, at least for the time, nowadays, another rotting crisis is, of course, much bigger. But back in 1993, of course, there were still a rather underground band releasing their first full length LP. So, I would say that having a thousand copies was definitely more than enough for the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, most albums uh, took a while to sell out. So, again, my personal opinion is that no more than a thousand copies of this album exist. As usual, uh, for those early Osmos albums, the pressing quality, I gotta say, is absolutely excellent. Uh, you get a great looking glossy cover, uh, printed in a sleeve with lyrics, uh, um, awesome sound quality, it's pressed on black vinyl as usual, um, really really nothing to complain about this one, uh, um, at least not as far as the record sounds and looks, it's 100% uh, 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 really really great. Uh, surface noise is pretty much non-existent, so uh, I would say that almost everything was dealt with uh, uh, the right way. And now I said almost everything uh, for a reason, because unfortunately uh, there's a small fuck up uh, in the song list. The fourth song uh, is mentioned as Dive the Deepest Abyss, as you can tell, uh, but if you listen to the album... Uh, um, you will see that it's not Dive the Deepest Abyss, but uh, it's actually the His Sleeping Majesty song instead. So, uh, they got a song list uh, a little bit mixed up. Uh, other than that, I would say the pressing is virtually flawless. It's definitely uh, not a cheap album to be found today. Uh, you should be ready to spend at least uh, 150 euro for a copy. It's definitely very, very rare, so if you're lucky enough to own one, Take good care of it, it's uh, extremely sought after and I think the price might even uh, increase in the next years. So, so once again, very, very, very uh, rare album. 
So the first repress of I Mighty Contract came out in 1997 as a picture disc on Century Media. And my god, I really don't know what went through the guys' heads when they decided to release this absolute abomination of an edition. I mean, just take a look at it. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a reflex, but I hope you can see the, the artwork. Um, it looks nothing like the original. Gun is the classic cover artwork with a huge uh, goat triumphant over the crucified ones. And instead they replaced it with this horrible, uh, pseudo-intellectual, disgusting Photoshop crap that has nothing to do with the original concept. I mean, why did they do that? Uh, it's just beyond me. And on the B side, what's worse? You, you, you get fucking Kinski's Nosferatu out of all people. I mean, why? It, it, it just has nothing in common with the original artwork. Even the guy himself looks completely uh, clueless here. It looks like, I don't know, he has an expression like, what the fuck am I doing here? Why am I, why am I on a rotting Christ to help me? Where's Werner Herzog? Please get me back to Transylvania. It's completely out of context, completely out of everything. Just doesn't make any sense. It's totally ridiculous, guys. You know, uh, I really don't like it when labels feel the urge to so-called improve artworks that were basically perfect with all sorts of silly effects, uh, especially when a record is uh, just perfect the way it came out, as in the case being. Uh, I mean, uh, this album was just flawless. Uh, perfect presentation, perfect artwork, perfect sound. You had it all. all. All you had to do was just uh, to reproduce it the, the, the way it was. So, so why in the freaking hell do you need to, to come up with something like that? It's just... It, might, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I really don't know um, whose idea was it to, to, to ruin an otherwise flawless album. Last time I spoke with the band, um, I forgot to ask them. Uh, my personal guess is that this was a Century Media thing. Um... You have to consider that back in 1997, gothic metal was pretty huge. Um, uh, this new artwork definitely reeks of gothic uh, tryhardism. So I think in a way they tried to perhaps ride away with the trend a little bit. Bear in mind that uh, also the band itself at that point in time was flirting with gothic uh, metal elements. Especially in the Sleep of the Angels and Kronos albums, they both have a clear gothic vibe to them. So, in a way, I guess that could be an interpretation, uh, but whatever the reason was, bottom line, the final outcome is nothing short of atrocious. So, thumbs down for this uh, press. I only bought it for the sake of fun. It was very cheap. I uh, think I paid it like 10 euro, uh, but it's definitely a press you want to avoid like the past, unless you're a real completist of the band. Otherwise, guys, just forget it. It's horrible and totally not worth the money. So, if you can't afford an original Osmos edition and you're looking for a good ratio of the album, uh, my personal advice is to go for this one version, which was released by uh, Black Vomit uh, Records from Greece. Uh, first in 2011. Uh, on white and also regular black vinyl, and later on in 2015 on picture disc, uh, uh, limited to 500 copies, of which uh, 100 came as a diehard edition, which is exactly the version I'm currently showing you, and includes a shirt, a shirt, which I'm gonna show you right now, um, with an awesome uh, old school artwork uh, taken from the Ada Swins uh, demo tape. Really, really gorgeous. Um, this version, as you can tell, is very, very close uh, to the original. Let me compare the two. Uh, slightly darker, perhaps, but other than that, it's basically uh, identical. Um, luckily, uh, thankfully, the, the brilliant cover artwork was restored, as you can tell. Uh, back cover is, I would say, absolutely identical to the original. Once again, let me compare the two. Yeah, peaks slightly blurrier, but nothing uh, really major. And uh, the picture disc I'm gonna show you is also absolutely brilliant looking. 
really really gorgeous uh, once again the same artwork that came with the other swings uh, um, demo tape uh, really really cool sounds just perfect uh, and you also get as a plus uh, two bonus tracks which are a fragment thy gift uh, and the fourth night of revelation uh, uh, live versions uh, uh, so uh, this is really um, worth the money it costs and uh, most important they fixed the tracklist issue which i told you about and which affected the very first press so you get all the songs in the right order um, it's very very well made uh, and it's not sold out yet so you don't need to pay silly prices for it you can still find it for like i would say 25 to 30 euro on discogs so just go for it uh, if you don't own the album yet it's really recommendable so these are pretty much uh, all the versions of Thy Mighty Contract currently in my possession. Uh, there's a fourth one uh, which was released last year through Peacefield Records uh, and judging from the pics I've seen on the web it looks absolutely killer, totally stunning. Uh, it comes with a cool booklet full of all pics and, and interviews, uh, totally top-notch pressing. Unfortunately, uh, that one is, is still not in my hands yet. Uh, I ordered it, it will be deli delivered in a couple of weeks, uh, so when I get it I will perhaps upload a short unboxing video of it. But even without owning it physically, uh, Peaceville is a guarantee of quality in my book and I'm sure that uh, their own edition uh, will be 100% uh, brilliant and totally worth the money, so don't miss it if you don't own the album yet. So guys, once again, this is it for the time being. Uh, if you have any request or question uh, whatsoever, just don't hesitate to get in touch. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel and follow my Facebook page. Uh, you will find the link in the channel's description. Hope you enjoyed this one and as usual, till the next time, keep it loud and heavy.